morning congregation and welcome to worship this morning. This is the last of our four week series where we have been reflecting on Jesus as our great physician. And so as we come into the Lord's presence this morning, I invite you to join with me as I read from Psalm 9, the first two verses. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will recount all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Let us pray together. We fix our eyes on you, Jesus, our Savior and our King. Thank you that you walk with us every day and that you are with us in and each and every moment. During this hour of worship, we come to you and we lay our lives before you. Lord, we adore you. We love you. You are very precious to us. So would you come and fill our hearts with your endless love and would you allow your Holy Spirit to blow through us this morning. Help us to rise in faith. Come and lift up our heads, remove the shadows of guilt and shine your grace into our minds. And so Lord, we worship you. We join with the heavens to sing your praise this morning. We declare your goodness now and always and we celebrate your greatness forevermore. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray this morning. Amen. This morning's reading is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, and reading from verses 46 to 52. Listen to the word of God. And they came to Jericho as Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city. A blind man, Bartimaeus, that is, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. May God add his blessing to his word this morning. To be blind is to live in total darkness. You're unable to see the movements of plants or trees, nature of people. You cannot see animals or flowers, the ocean, the sky, the land. You are not able to see the joy in a smile or the tears in the eyes of someone else. Sometimes we, we say it was so dark I could not even see my own hand in front of my face. For some of us that may be our only experience of wait, what it may be like to be unable to see. Jesus and his disciples were passing through Jericho on their way to Jerusalem to attend the Passover. And thousands of people would have been on the roads that day. And so Jericho was jam-packed with people. And in the midst of all this hustle and bustle, sits a man by the name of Bartimaeus begging for money on the side of the road. According to historical sources, beggars were a common occurrence in most towns. And anyone with a crippling disease or disability was at a severe disadvantage and was usually forced to beg. But Jesus passed by that day and offered new life to blind Bartimaeus. So what can we learn from this miracle story about how to receive new life from Jesus, our great physician? Firstly, we learn from Bartimaeus that he was persistent. He was sitting on the roadside listening to all the conversations of the passers-by on their way to Passover in Jerusalem. And then he hears that Jesus is there, and because he's so desperate to escape from his world of darkness, he shouts out to Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. The crowds, interestingly enough, were annoyed with him, and so they tell him to be quiet. But Mark tells us he shouted all the more. Because nothing was going to stop him from coming face to face with Jesus. He was desperate to have an encounter with Jesus. It was that desperation in his voice and that deep desire in his heart that must have caught the attention of Jesus that day. 
surely in our lives too and in our hearts when we too are desperate to encounter Jesus, like blind Bartimaeus, Jesus too will stop and, and call out to us when he hears that desperation. It's that hunger, that determination, that longing within us to encounter the life-giving Jesus Christ that compels us to remain persistent as we, as we call out or shout out to, to Jesus. Bartimaeus was determined to meet the one person, the great physician who could heal him of his blindness. So he calls out to Jesus and in spite of all the noise around him, Jesus hears him and Jesus stops, Mark tells us, and Jesus calls him. It should not really surprise us because Jesus always hears people when they call out to him, no matter where they are, no matter where we are, at home, at work, in the car, in a hospital bed, or in church. When we call out to Jesus in prayer, he hears us. We all know that the Christian way of following Jesus is not always easy. Discipleship is, a, is hard work and it demands a, a life of, of discipline as we are followers of Christ. And part of that discipline, other than reading our, our Bibles and attending worship on a Sunday, is to come to God in prayer in a consistent and a, in a persistent way. Part of that discipline is to keep knocking and to keep asking to keep on praying, to keep on calling out to Jesus. Bartimaeus remained persistent until he got to encounter Jesus. Nothing was going to stand in his way, not even the crowds that day that were on their way to Passover in Jerusalem. Not even his blindness was going to stand in his way. Absolutely nothing was going to stop him from meeting with Jesus, his great physician. And so too, we must be persistent in our walk with the Lord. Think that it is when we are persistent and we keep knocking and we keep asking and we keep praying that Jesus calls us to. When we are persistent in our prayer life, our devotional life, our worship of, of Jesus, we hear his call and his call is to a deeper spiritual walk with him. When we develop that persistence, we grow in spiritual maturity. So I want to encourage you this morning to never give up. Because blind Bartimaeus did not. Remain persistent. Keep on calling out to Jesus. The second thing we learn from this blind man is that he responded to Jesus immediately. Verse 50 says, throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and he, and he came to Jesus. From this verse, we can see that blind Bartimaeus cast off his cloak because it would have hindered him in some ways from running to Jesus. But more importantly, it's important to note that beggars in those days spread out their cloaks as they sat on the side of, of, road, on the, of the road. So that as people donated money to them, they would throw these coins and these coins would be caught in the cloak. So the blind man's cloak was as, as important to his livelihood as boats were to fishermen or as a booth was to a tax collector. And just as the disciples abandoned their fishing boats and their booths to follow Jesus, this blind man throws aside his cloak to stand before Jesus. He doesn't say to Jesus, well, wait until I've done this or I've done that or wait until I've finished something. Or maybe Jesus, one day I'll ask you for help or one day when it suits me, I'm going to follow you. No, he, the blind man does not do that. But to me, it comes like a shot when Jesus calls him. The Bible says, throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and he came to Jesus. Certain chances in life only happen once. Bartimaeus, maybe he instinctively knew that. And he was not going to miss this opportunity. Sometimes we long to abandon a bad habit. Sometimes we long to clean up our lives of some wrongdoings or actions. Sometimes we, we long and we desire to give ourselves more to Jesus. But so often we don't act in that moment when we know that that's the right thing to do. We wait, we delay, we don't rush, we don't jump to our feet like this blind man and go to Jesus. And then the chance or the opportunity sometimes passes us by. Bartimaeus calls on Jesus. Bartimaeus is persistent. This is the chance of his life. It's now or never, and a decision has to be taken by him. 
This is the moment that he's going to be led out of his darkness into light. On the one hand, we have Jesus, the, sort of, the source of light and the source of life. And on the other hand, we have a blind man. So on the one hand, we have this all-seeing God and we have this nothing-seeing man. On the one hand, we have this all-powerful God and this helpless, powerless blind man. Total light and total darkness, such opposites in these two people, Jesus and blind Bartimaeus. But like Bartimaeus, if we want to receive from Jesus, we need to develop that same sense of immediacy, to jump up and to run when he calls. And he is calling, isn't he? The one offering light to us. There's often a, a lack of urgency in our relationship with Jesus. We know what God wants for us, but we put it on the, on the back burner. We know that we should be praying more, and so we will start tomorrow, well, maybe. Our spiritual lives often lack that sense of urgency. Like Bartimaeus, we need to jump to our feet. We need to run to Jesus because he's calling us into a deeper relationship with him. We need to let go of the past when we come to Jesus. Blind Bartimaeus realized that his cloak provided him with comfort, helped to keep him warm. It held the, the money that passes by through to him. But this was all useful while he was on the roadside begging. For him to move forward, he had to now forget about his past. Many times we want to come to Jesus, but we don't want to let go of the things that hold us in bondage. For us to move forward, we need to learn to throw down that old cloak, get up, move forward. We can't grow spiritually, we can't get into a deeper relationship with the Lord if we remain in that same spot, stuck on the side of the road. But Amias teaches us another incredible lesson. Let us let go of the things that could hinder us from getting into the kingdom of God, from drawing closer to our great physician, Jesus. As Hebrews in chapter 12 and verse 1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run the race with perseverance that is marked out for us. So being a Christian, being a disciple involves hard work. It requires us to give up whatever endangers our relationship with God. It requires us to run patiently this race and to struggle against the sin with the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Thirdly, Bartimaeus knew exactly what he wanted and he wanted his sight. He couldn't see. Jesus but he shouted out to him to help him and we cannot see him either we cannot see Jesus but we can call out we can shout out to him and call on him for help and when Bartimaeus called on Jesus Jesus asked him these words what do you want me to do for you and the blind man said rabbi I want to see I wonder if you could imagine Jesus asking you that very same question this morning how would you respond Jesus said to Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? And I want to believe that he asks us the same question this morning. And so what do you want Jesus to do for you today? When you go to a dentist, you don't say to the dentist, just take out any tooth. You ask him to extract the one that is diseased. It should be so with us and Jesus. When we go to Jesus... If we are as desperately definite as Bartimaeus, things will happen. We also need to know exactly what we want from God. Maybe our prayer should be more specific. For example, Lord, I have a, a meeting today and I'm really nervous about it. So please, would you give me the confidence and the right words to say in that meeting? Or Lord, I, I really want to read the Bible more. So please get me and lead me to the right passages and open them up to me as I read them this week. When we ask God specifically to help us, it's easier to see him at work in our lives. That's how it was for blind Bartimaeus. He knew exactly what he wanted and so with confidence he placed his request before Jesus saying, Rabbi, I want to see. And that was a specific prayer request. And either he was going to leave the presence of Jesus being able to see or not. Notice what Bartimaeus asked for. He asked for help. 
It was as simple as that. He simply asked for help. He just said, I want to see. This is all we can say to Jesus as well. It's the words from the old hymn, Rock of Ages, say, nothing in my hand I bring, simply to the cross I cling. Those words of the hymn mean we can offer nothing to Jesus. He died on a cross for us. All we can do is cling to that cross. To cling means that we hold on to Jesus. There is no other way. We come to Jesus, we bring nothing except the desire of our, of our hearts and we ask for help and we, we cling to him. And then in faith, we believe that he will open the eyes of our hearts so that we too can see. Bartimaeus had faith. Yes, he was physically blind, but he wasn't totally spiritually, spiritually blind. He had faith in Jesus. When he heard that Jesus was passing by that day on the way to Jerusalem, he knew Jesus had performed many miracles. He knew he'd raised the dead and he'd cured lepers and people of diseases. He'd given sight to the blind. And so Bartimaeus, with confidence and faith in his voice, he says, Jesus, son of David. Those words, son of David, were a simple expression of his faith. Bartimaeus called on Jesus to do something. Bartimaeus believed in faith that Jesus could do something for him. It was a simple cry that day. But Bartimaeus in his helplessness, but with faith, calls on Jesus to help him. Have you ever been in a situation where you feel so helpless that actually all you can do is turn and call on Jesus to help you? So Bartimaeus, his faith might have been very small. But what he had, he used to call on Jesus. Interesting that we note from the reading today that Bartimaeus called on Jesus, but the people told him to keep quiet. I want to suggest from that part of the story that Mark recalls that he had more faith than the crowds following Jesus that day. What is also interesting about Bartimaeus' faith is that he did, not, he did not bother thinking, well, maybe I'm not good enough for Jesus. We don't need to reach a certain level of holiness before God is willing to reach out and touch us. We don't need a whole lot of faith to get the attention of Jesus. All Jesus asks is for us to be persistent, that we respond to him when we hear him call, that we cling to him, and that we seek his involvement in our lives in a tangible way. If we join blind Bartimaeus in approaching life that way, then like him, we will receive healing and peace and grace and our lives will be transformed because we too will be able to see Jesus. We learn from Bartimaeus that faith clings to Jesus no matter what is going on and happening in our lives. And lastly this morning, Bartimaeus, after he was healed, he followed Jesus. So he received more than his sight that day. He received an invitation to be part of the kingdom of God. When Jesus healed Bartimaeus, Jesus told him these words. He said, go, your faith has healed you. But instead of leaving Jesus that day after receiving his sight, he decided to follow Jesus. Jesus said, go, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road, says verse 52. Bartimaeus didn't just want healing from Jesus, but he also wanted the great healer. He wanted his great physician. Bartimaeus was not only concerned about his physical healing, but he was concerned about his spiritual healing as well. As we can see that he followed Jesus, even though Jesus told him he could go his own way. Bartimaeus didn't selfishly go his own way after he got his needs met. He began with a need he went with gratitude. He finished with, with loyalty to Jesus, to his great physician. And that, I think, is the perfect summary of the, of the stages of discipleship, of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. We come with a need to be saved by Jesus. We are grateful for that. And then we serve him and follow him. We remind you again of what verse 52 says. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road to this formerly blind man, was now one of the disciples of Jesus. And he used his sight now to follow Jesus along the way of discipleship. Let's remember Jesus 
was going to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover and then he would soon go on his way to the cross. So Bartimaeus followed. I mean, what other way would he, would he want to go, really? After all, he had not only received his physical sight, but he had received spiritual sight as well. And he could not think of any other better way to, than to repay Jesus by following him, by becoming a disciple. Jesus, the miracle worker, gave Bartimaeus his sight. Jesus led him out of darkness into his glorious light, but he led him into spiritual light as well. Today there are many people in the world that are spiritually blind. Spiritual darkness is separation from God, and that means no life, no hope, no light, darkness. And nobody should be living in darkness. Everyone should desire to enter the joy of the light that only Jesus can give. Living with God always begins with receiving healing and a new life from him. This is, of course, what the story of the healing of blind Bartimaeus is all about. The spiritual healing, the life from him, from his great physician. Amen. Let us pray together. Lord, every crisis in life is an opportunity to turn to you and to trust in your love and to rest in your healing hands. In you we are secure despite the uncertainties of life. It means we raise our eyes to heaven rather than looking out and down in fear. Heavenly Father, thank you that nothing is impossible for you. Fill us with the faith that we need, the same faith that Bartimaeus had, faith that you can answer us. Because what seems impossible to us is well within your power. You are the God of the impossible. Your name above all names. Your power is unlimited and your strength has no end. You said we only need faith as small as a mustard seed to move a mountain. We may face many mountains and feel like our faith is weak. So would you amaze us this week with your miraculous life-changing power? Remind us that you are in control of everything in our lives and in this world. You are able to do far more than we could ever ask or imagine. Open the eyes of our heart, Lord, that we would see you more clearly, love you and follow you. In the name of our great physician, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Jesus Christ throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen.